Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about how to pass a road test. And this is what Smart Drive Test specializes in, helping you pass a road test regardless of where you are in the world, regardless of what class of license you're going for, or regardless of how old you are. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about passing a road test. And Lena's here and her son had some difficulty with his road test. We're going to help with that and make sure that you're successful on the next road test. HC is here and others are here as well uh, on the YouTube channel. And we have recently passed the 100,000 uh, subscriber mark here on the Smart Drive Test channel. And I cannot... Uh, talk just can't say how proud I am of that and uh, welcome everybody else who has made this possible all the smart drivers here so just bear with me I look a little pale here on the, on the, the uh, live stream here so I'm just gonna crank up the contrast just a little bit and see if I can start looking a little bit normal so it's always very different what it looks like out there in the real world so Edgar is here Edith is here uh, Badamazi is here. Hello, everyone. If you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from and what class of license you're going for in the world. Jaden is here. Jaden recently got his learner's permit there in Florida. That's awesome. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Tommy. Rosie's here. Additions here, and it is going to get busy. This is a very popular topic that I do here on the Smart Drive Test channel. So if I don't get to your question, repeat your question there's also a super chat is available and I'll do the best that I can if I don't you can always send me an email rick at smartdrivetest.com and I'll do my best to answer your question uh, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get back to you but I do my best to do what I can Katina uh, my husband is teaching me but he yells so no I don't think I want to learn how to drive and Katina I don't blame you if somebody is yelling at you that is not the way to do it and uh, if when Corey shows up here I haven't seen Corey yet but when Corey gets here uh, he'll get the video up for you on mentoring new drivers Edgar thank you for the super chat there everything is appreciated and everything helps to keep the channel going and helps me to uh, get you new videos up and I have new inspiration I got a couple of videos up this week and I'll point those out as well so Lilla is here I have my test at the end of the month Edition uh, in 27, I got my first road test coming at the end of the month. You're going to do awesome. Rosie's here. Congrats on 100,000 subs. I got nervous and pushed my test date back. My road test is in two weeks. Your videos have helped me, and you're going to do awesome. Stormy Dawn's here. Uh, Tommy's here from Oshawa. GLaDOS, thank you so much for the congratulations there. Ismail, uh, hello, hello, hello. So awesome. Lots of people here. Awesome. Uh, did it, Lilla, um, how I always forget to use my mirrors before I indicate. How can I remember to do so? Uh, Lilla, practice. You're going to have to practice the um, mirror signal shoulder check. So just repeat that to yourself every time you move the vehicle laterally, every time that you move the vehicle sideways. Mirror signal shoulder check. Mirror signal shoulder check. Okay, so that's how you're going to work that and just keep it going over your head. Uh, Campine mode. Juke. I'm just going to call you Juke because. <laughs> I can't get all that. Hello from New York City. And yes, we had a question the other day. Uh, thank you for the super chat there. I think it was retracted, but that's all right. Stormy Dawn, I'm 31, only have a permit. Stormy Dawn, you're going to do just fine there uh, with your permit there. Bricks for Wheels, there's Corey. Uh, Bricks for Wheels is Corey. Corey's in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, here in Canada. And okay, uh, Mike seems a bit tad on the quiet side, not critical sound moderate uh, with full volume on my end. Okay, so I haven't adjusted the volume. Uh, everything seems to be fine. Is the volume good for everybody else? Corey says a little bit. Uh, why do I get nervous and heartbeat fast when driving? Uh, Stormy Dawn, that's just part of it and the, the more you do, the easier it's going to get. So uh, yeah, have a look at that. Okay, um, there you go, HC, excellent, 47 and learning to drive. And just remind, remember, everybody who's here on the channel and you're working through these challenges of getting your license, of earning your license and starting to drive, I started my YouTube channel when I was 50. <laughs> 50 years old I started this and I it was a huge learning curve. So there's lots of challenges uh, that we go through in life, but you can do it 
and you can definitely get your learner's license with enough practice and enough good information which is what I'm going to give you here on the channel you can be successful getting your license so know that for sure uh, St. Hilaire, hello from New York, hello uh, Stormy, when I first started getting on the road I had nerves and my heart was pounding, you'll get used to it, excellent and this is the other part that I really like is smart drivers who are supporting each other, who are helping each other out and sharing their experiences and that's the other uh, community that I wanted to build with smart drivers who are helping each other and, and supporting each other and being positive and one of the things I will tell you is, is that I do police the comments to the best of my ability here on YouTube and YouTube has some fantastic tools for me to do that and I really work hard to make this channel about empowerment and about a safe place for people to learn and people to be you know, start a career as a truck or bus driver, learn some defensive driving, and learn how to pass a road test, okay? Rosie, uh, any tricks to parallel parking perfect the first time? Yes, Rosie, practice, practice, practice. Uh, and we'll go over that a little bit more. Just remind me, Rosie, and I'll give you some more tips. I just wanna get over to the PowerPoint presentation, get through that for people, and then we can answer all those questions, have all those questions and answers uh, in the question and answer period, okay? Uh, Liz, uh, how I wish you were my instructor. <laughs> Thanks so much. I love your YouTube channel. I know a lot of new drivers watch you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Liz. Uh, addition, just take some deep breaths before you start and keep going over your mental checklist, lights, uh, check signs, and keep mine in mind. There we go. Yes, uh, James, and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about here is practice, practice, practice. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so just bear with me here while I get over to the PowerPoint presentation here. And yes, transition. There we go. Okay, so pass the road test first time. Rick August, uh, and I do have a PhD. And just bear with me. There we go. Page down. Rick August, PhD. Uh, I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. Drove uh, for Greyhound in Australia and one of the regional bus lines there while I was doing my graduate degree. I have been a licensed driving instructor since 1997, so more than 20 years now, I hate to say. <laughs> uh, and I have a doctorate in legal history with a specialty in policing as it relates to traffic. So that's who I am in a nutshell if you're new to the Smart Drive Test channel. New videos this week, how to avoid potholes. I had a uh, request from Damien there in Montreal and I did that. And if you watch the video, you'll learn why there's a chicken in the pothole and tell the story about the chickens and potholes and Montreal and how all that comes together. So have a look at that as well. And then yesterday I got up the uh, amendment finally for the how to reverse for the purposes of passing a road test. And it was long overdue because there was some misinformation in that video about the fact that you could remove your seatbelt and no you cannot <laughs> remove your seatbelt for the purposes of a road test for the duration of your road test leave your seatbelt on uh, unfortunately I as I said I, there was some misinformation in that CDL drivers drivers of larger vehicles yes you can take your seatbelt off but for passenger vehicles uh, leave your seatbelt on for the duration of the videos and uh, so it was well received and uh, yes, got those up. Now I just realized that in both these thumbnails I'm wearing the same shirt. So I'm thinking that I need to expand my wardrobe a little bit. And here's the other thing that we got up this week. Uh, I went over to Fiverr and got animation done. And I'm, I, I promise you, I absolutely promise I'm gonna do the first draw for the 100K campaign. And Corey will put up the link for you for the 100K campaign. Here's the video. And I just noticed in that video that she winks at the end of the, uh, when the last line comes up, helping 100,000 uh, drivers get their license. So yes, I'm gonna do the draw this week. So if you've passed your road test this year, and we helped you, Smart Drive Test, go over to the Smart Drive Test website, sign up for the draw, and you'll go into the draw for a monthly fuel card of $100 here in North America, and we'll help you do that. And the other, one of the other criteria is for the winner who wins the $100 fuel card, uh, I just need a copy of your p learner's permit, of your new license that it's been issued within this year, and then that way you'll be eligible for the 100,000 k So we're gonna get caught up on that, we're gonna do the first draw, and we'll get caught up back to January here, so that's gonna happen as well. All right. Getting a license. The first place you gotta start with anywhere in the world is you gotta start with a knowledge test. You gotta go in, you gotta get a learner's permit, you gotta do a knowledge test. And I recommend to students, do not read the driver's handbook. It is boring. 
<laughs> okay. Don't read it cover from cover because, man, it was written by bureaucrats and it, it's, it's about as exciting as chewing on sawdust. Uh, so don't do that. Go online, find practice driving test questions, do the practice driving test questions. Don't use them as a test of your ability. Rather, use the online practice driving test questions as a measure of where you're at to identify the gaps in your knowledge. So if you're weak on signs, then go back to the handbook, look up the signs, do the sign stuff, and then go back and do the sign questions again. And there are some sign questions over in the Smart Drive Test website. Go over there and have a look. The other thing that you're looking at in terms of practice driving test questions is you have to learn how to do multiple choice questions. And it comes back to the tagline of Smart Drive Test, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. And the uh, example that I always give is the four-way stop. Uh, who has the right of way? The, the person on the right, first person uh, at, uh, to arrive at the intersection, the largest vehicle or the, the vehicle in the intersection. The, the correct answer is the first vehicle to arrive or the person on the right. Those are the correct answers. The best answer, however, is the vehicle in the intersection because if there's a vehicle in the intersection, you're not going to go. So that's the best answer and that's the example I give for the tagline. The other thing about multiple choice questions for the purposes of passing your learner's test is there's lots of terminology. You have to learn about signs, signals, and road markings. You have to learn about right of way and you have to learn about the driving task. And just quickly, the driving task is six components of traffic and the traffic environment that are changing all of the time on a, con on a constant basis. For example, uh, light, weather, traffic, roadways, drivers and vehicles. Those six factors come together in any, co any combination that will change a traffic situation and the environment in which you're driving. So those are things that you need to know about and learn about for the purposes of passing your learner's test. All right, any, comp any road test anywhere in the world, any class of license has four major components. Speed management, space management, observation, and communication. And space management, I would argue, these are not in the right order of importance, but space management, I would argue, is the most important component for a road test. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're not near anything, it's less likely that you're going to hit anything. And I'll tell you a story about space management. One of my pet peeves as a pedestrian on roadways, when I'm walking across the roadway and somebody makes a left-hand turn and they drive right up to me within three or four feet of me, oh, that annoys me. <laughs> to the point of road rage because why are they driving right up to a pedestrian? And it's just, I'm a vulnerable road user. I'm standing in the roadway and these people insist on driving right up to me. Don't do that. Wait in the intersection on the other side until the pedestrian has cleared. And there's a video here on how much space you have to give between your vehicle and pedestrians for the purposes of passing a road test and Corey will put that up for you. So space management, quickly. Don't get near anything. You need to have, maintain a following distance of two to three seconds. You need to stop in traffic so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. You need to stop at the correct stopping position at stop signed intersections before the stop line, before the crosswalk or sidewalk and you have to stop at the edge where the two roads meet. That is space management. There's one other piece I'm missing right now. Don't block intersections. If you can't clear an intersection, don't drive into the intersection for the purposes of a road test. Speed management, posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. You need to observe well while you're doing your road test. You have to look far down the road. You have to have a scanning pattern in place. So far down the road, in, check your center mirror. Far down the road, both shoulders in check your instrument panel make sure that you're obeying this posted speed limit or flow of traffic whichever is less and then far down the road and then in check your wing mirrors you have to shoulder check twice for every time that you make a turn or every time that you move the vehicle laterally so you're changing lanes or whatnot you need to shoulder check twice this video here that's up here the thumbnail that's what will help you do that and then finally you uh sorry observation just one more piece when you're backing up you have to do a 360 degree scan before you back up and you have to look out the back window and look at the video that I put up yesterday on reversing correctly for the purposes of a road test. And for every vehicle length that you back up, you need to stop, pause, do a 360 degree scan and then back up. And then finally communication, and there's five ways that we communicate with other traffic on a road test. Lights, signals, the horn, eye contact with other road users, uh, hand gestures, make sure you use all five fingers. Don't use number, don't tell them they're number one on a road test, you won't be successful. And then finally, the position of your vehicle on the road tells other road users 
your intent. So for example, if you're in the left hand turning lane, it's probably a good bet that you're going to be turning left or another vehicle is going to be turning left. Okay, learn faster to drive well overall. So slow speed maneuvers, parallel park, three point turn, uh, reverse stall parking, two point reverse turn and U-turns. These are some of the slow speed maneuvers that you could be required to do on a road test. I can almost guarantee you that parallel park, three point turn and reverse stall parking are almost, are. you can be guaranteed that you're gonna have to do those three maneuvers. Now, slow speed maneuvers, not sexy, but if you can do these well, it's going to improve your overall driving. And the other piece about a road test is, is that seven eight eighths of the road test is in a forward motion. One eighth is these slow speed maneuvers, and it's these slow speed maneuvers that give drivers the most grief. And as the comment there uh, at the beginning, and it, it just it evades me who said it, but practice, practice, practice. And if you can practice these slow speed maneuvers, it's going to improve your overall driving and you're gonna be a better driver overall. So spend time on these, okay? Requirements of a road test. As you're driving, holding the vehicle in the lane and in the correct positions, observing and shoulder checking, you must respond to changing traffic situations. And if you are in doubt, if the traffic situation simply becomes too complex or too overwhelming, stop the vehicle, wait for the other traffic and road users to disperse and then carry on. The other automatic fail on a road test is if you do not stop for an emergency vehicle that has lights flashing and sirens blaring, you must pull over to the closest edge of the road, whether that's right or left, come to a complete stop, allow the emergency vehicle to pass, and then you can resume. And obviously you're gonna shoulder check twice before you move back into your lane. You're gonna signal, do all the appropriate observations and communications to execute, execute that maneuver. And again, emergency vehicles, there's another video here on the channel about emergency stops, and Corey will put that up for you as well. Okay, abilities for a road test. You must have two hands on the steering wheel for the entire time of the road test from start to, begin, start to end. The only time that you're allowed to have one hand on the, via, on the steering wheel, rather, reversing, or if you're shifting gears, those are the two times. So stopping in traffic, make sure that you stop back so you can see the tires making clear contact with the pavement and that comes with space management. You must stop at the correct uh, position at stop sign intersections and other controlled intersections. Uh, some ex examiners, driving examiners at DOTs and other uh, test centers are going to say, at the controlled intersection, turn left or right. And when they, what they mean by controlled intersections is stop signs, yield signs, or traffic lights. Those are controls that control you at the intersection. Uh, uncontrolled intersections don't have any signs and, or don't have any lights. There's nothing there to uh, indicate what you need to do. And you need to understand right of way. And there's a video here on right of way. It's a, it's a lengthy video. I go over uh, lots of intersections in residential areas, T intersections and those types of things. And Corey will put that up for you there as well. Now, after you've been driving for a few days, maybe a week, 10 days, what I suggest to students, and often when I'm working with students, this is what I will do with them, is I will go back and revisit the fundamentals. I will go back to slow speed maneuvers, I'll go back and get the pylons and go back to the, the parking lot and get them to revisit some of that stuff. Because what happens is, you're working with your mentor, you're working with your instructors, and you get out on the roadway and there's all this information that's pouring in and you're trying to incorporate, in, incorporate it into your driving, you're trying to incorporate it into your knowledge and your, your body and how you're driving the vehicle and those types of things, and you miss some of the fundamentals. So it's always a good idea to revisit the fundamentals, go back, revisit mastering the primary controls, the steering wheel, the throttle, and the brake, and if you're driving a manual transmission, the clutch. And then that way you can just kind of regroup get into an area and practice in a place where there isn't any traffic and you can revisit these fundamentals and then you can go back out on the roadway and you'll find that if you do this after seven to 10 days of trying to drive out on the roadways and coping with all the traffic and those types of things, that again, leaps and surges, because this is the way that we learn, is we learn in increments, leaps and surges. And that's the way that your driving is gonna go. You're gonna go out for a few days and you're not gonna learn very much and then all of a sudden you're gonna go back and revisit the fundamentals and you're gonna go in leaps and surges. Now, the other piece in terms of getting ready for a driving, uh, a driving test is you can take driving lessons. Now you can take whole classes. If you go to a driving school, they're gonna have a package and it's gonna say 10 lessons, in vehicle lessons, two in class lessons and then they'll take you for your road test. So those are whole class packages, individual lessons. You can take one or two lessons. 
Uh, and then finally you can do a mock road test. And for my pass your road test first time, which is currently on specials, you can pick that up over at the Smart Drive Test uh, website for 30% off. Just use the code SMART30. And uh, what I recommend to students, what they need to do is they need to take a mock road test. And a mock road test is basically a practice driving test where a driving instructor will go out with you for half an hour, 45 minutes. They'll evaluate your driving and they'll say, listen, these are your strengths and these are the areas, the maneuvers and skills that need to be improved for you to be successful on a road test. And remember, driving instructors teach students how to pass a road test every day. So go to a local driving school, let's say, listen, I want to practice driving test. They'll take you out and they'll evaluate your driving and your preparedness for a road test. All right. While you're practicing for your road test, get as much practice as possible. Try to practice in different vehicles if you can and practice in different driving environments at different times of the day and different traffic conditions and those types of things. The more practice you can get, the better ready you're going to be for your road test. And practice the skills that you need for your road test. I know that it's not sexy that you need to drive the, the posted speed limit, especially if you're going on a road trip with your parents or something like that. It's really, really tough to drive the posted speed limit when everybody else is driving eight to 12 miles an hour above the posted speed limit or here in Canada they're driving 10 to 20 kilometers an hour above the posted speed limit but you need to do that for the purposes of your road test because on your you don't want to be driving above the posted speed limit keeping up with traffic flow where you're learning to or when you're preparing for your road test and then afterwards you get into that and you start following traffic you're not going to be successful on your road test all right all right the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes bad drivers pass and sometimes good drivers fail a road test. It depends on the situations that come along on the day of your road test. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. Other times it does work out. And so for drivers that, you know, and I've had drivers do this that I've taken down for road tests. I'm like, oh my God, they're not ready for the road test. And everything just kind of comes together. Somebody's smiling on them that day. Or good drivers who should pass just get into a situation that they can't handle, uh, they become overwhelmed, and they're not successful on their road test. So know that. But do know that drivers with driver training are 97% successful on a road test. So if you don't want to go out and take formalized training with a local driving school, you can go over to the Smart Drive Test website, sign up for my course take that course get a practice driving test with a local driving school and you are in a very good position to be successful on your road test so know that as well okay practice your road test book three weeks out that you need to do your practice driving test having seven ten to seven to ten days before your road test and as i say to students it's about it depends i and sam in new york who works for rookie auto driving school there they have a practice driving test that you can take for about $25. Some of them here in Canada and other places are going to be a little bit more expensive. It's going to be $50 or $70. But it's cheaper in the long run than it is trying to rebuild your confidence if you're not successful the first time on your driver's license test. It's easier to go down, be prepared, and just nail it the first time than it is to try and rebuild your confidence. Because anything that we're not successful at, it takes, you know, we take a hit. We're not robots. <laughs> we're going to be depressed for a couple of days. So it's just easier to be prepared the first time and do it the first time and pass, okay? And as Edna says in The Incredibles, luck favors the prepared. So learn the basics, learn observation, learn communication, uh, speed management, and space management. If you can do that, regardless of class of license, regardless of where you are in the world, regardless of how old you are, you're going to be successful on your road test, okay? On road test day, get a good night's sleep, uh, bring your documentation, your driver's license, and a secondary piece of identification, uh, glasses, prescription glasses if you wear those, and bring money. Driver's tests, yes, unfortunately there's a cost associated with them. If there aren't signs prohibiting it when you get to the test center, back into the parking stall. It's much easier because you don't want to have to back out of the parking stall at the beginning of your road test. There's just too much going on, you're too kind of psyched out, you're nervous, you're anxious. So back into the parking stall as well. That'll give you a bit of practice and make you feel better about going into the road test. Okay? And keep going on the road test until you're told to stop. Do not stop. Doesn't matter what the examiner's doing, what he or she is writing on the little uh, clipboard or whatever they're doing over there. 
talking on their phones, looking at their phone, whatever they're doing. You focus on what you're doing and keep going until you're told to stop. Because even if you make a mistake, the examiner may or may not see it or they may not put the same value on it that you do. So it's important, keep going until you're told to stop. And for the purposes of passing a road test, you need to demonstrate that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions. Simply speaking, you take away the examiner's right to fail you. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all you need to do to be successful on your road test. So we're going to answer questions now. Anything that you have uh, that you want to an have answered for the purposes of passing your road test. So good luck on your road test and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So we're going to transition back over here. Here we go. There we are. And we'll get back to questions. And again, if you have any questions or if I miss anything, uh, I missed your question. There's always super chats available and that's greatly appreciated. Uh, and there's the coupon. Corey's put that up for you as well. And the course there is uh, prepared as well. Uh, in the course, there's also a timeline of exactly what you need to do. It's a six week timeline, what you need to do on specific weeks, what you should be practicing uh, to be prepared for your road test and to be successful on that road test, okay? Uh, okay, Charnel, how long does a road test usually last? It depends where you are in North America, Charnel. Uh, in Ontario, some of the road tests are 30 to 40 minutes. Here in British Columbia, they're usually about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Uh, I do know in New York City and other large metropolitan areas, these can be as short as 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes. Uh, and I had a smart driver just yesterday passed his or her road test and it was like five minutes, but <laughs> they said the examiner was in a hurry. And I've had that happen where examiners are in a hurry. Uh, I took my class one road test, which is tractor trader license, on a Friday before a long weekend and essentially it was like it was an hour whereas most tractor trailer road tests are two and a half hours it was basically an hour It was like the pre-trip inspection back around the corner and make four right turns and come back to the test center so it really depends on where you are in the world on how long your road test is gonna is gonna last um, okay hot pepper I won't get failed for not going at green mm, you need to go at green <laughs> Okay, um, there we go. Okay, so questions, questions, questions. Addition, you're supposed to yield for public transport. Uh, so I believe if the bus is stopped, you're supposed to wait behind them unless there is a safe lane to pull into. Uh, that's not true, addition. Uh, about transit buses, you don't have to yield to transit buses. There, And I'll just have a caveat. If there is one of those signs on the back, yield to bus when it's pulling out, and the speed limit is under 60 kilometers an hour, then yes, you do have to yield to it, but you don't have to yield to pedestrians. One of the things that I'll talk about in terms of school buses and transit buses that is different is, is that tran transit buses, uh, the way that transit buses infrastructure is set up is, is it's set up to facilitate the flow of traffic within a city area. So it, they're there not to impede traffic. And this is why they have pullouts bus deep depots and those types of things to alight and bring on passengers. Whereas school buses are designed so that they stop traffic for the safety of children getting on and off the school bus. It stays on the road, it activates the lights, traffic is supposed to come to a stop. And of course here in BC we've recently had uh, even more uh, penalties imposed on drivers who don't stop for school buses. Uh, and unfortunately, this is sort of an ongoing debate about how stiff can we make the penalties for drivers who don't stop for school buses. And, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's still not working because you could talk to school bus drivers and they'll tell you all the time that drivers don't stop for school buses. They're going to go speeding past, past the school bus when the lights are flashing. So you have to come to a stop for school buses. You don't have to yield to transit buses unless they have that sign on the back, uh, which I'll try and find for you here and show you what that is, but uh, have a look at that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Addition, if a line is sell, it's indicating you're not allowed to cross it in any way, waiting is safer bet. Uh, that's not true either about a line is solid addition. Uh, if it's a single solid yellow line in North America, you can pass with caution. It's only if it's a double solid yellow line and that's confusion for a lot of people. Okay, 
Uh, Fogmaster, do you have to use turn signals when reverse parking for a road test in the USA? Yes. And Fogmaster, you cannot signal too much for the purposes of a road test and communicate. So when you come up to prepare to reverse stall park, you, so you pull up and you're going to back around the corner, you pull up, you automatically, as soon as you stop, put the vehicle into reverse, which activates the reverse lights on the vehicle and then indicates your signal. So you're going to put your right signal on to indicate that you're going to go around and back up to the right. That way, vehicles behind you that are approaching from the rear are going to see the reverse lights and they're going to see the signal to the right knowing that you're going to back around to the right. Okay? Uh, so there you go. Okay. What else we got here? Yes, this is what I wanted. Okay. Now, one of the other stories that I'll tell you about road tests, I had a student some years ago who was taking a road test and we had driven around the area where he was, he was gonna take his road test in the truck. And what happened was uh, he ended up being unsuccessful on his road test, not because of anything that happened, but uh, one intersection, there was an advanced green, so there was a red light controlling left turning traffic and he come up, he saw the through traffic had the green light, came to a stop and then pulled out in the intersection and moved to make the left hand turn. So he went contrary to a traffic light. If you go contrary to a traffic light or contrary to a sign on a road test, unfortunately that's an automatic fail. So this driver was not successful on his road test because he tried to turn contrary to a traffic light. And as the examiner explained to me, he said, he said listen, other, he, otherwise he was great. So my point is, is that it is imperative that you practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test for the class of license that you're going to be taking. And you only need to go out about 10 or 12 minutes from the test center. That's the area around the test center where you're going to be driving. If you're not sure, go with a local driving school and they will take you on the routes that the driving examiners take you on for the purposes of your road test because you want to be familiar with the intersections, with the signs, with the traffic lights, where the schools are and if schools are in session because you're going to have to pay attention to all those types of things, uh, especially uh, school zone signs because if you speed in a school zone, that's an automatic fail on a road test. So know that. Again, if you don't stop for school buses, if you're taking your road test in a rural area and you pass a school bus that has lights flashing or is coming to a stop and you don't get around the bus safely, that's going to be an automatic fail on a road test. So it's imperative that you practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test, okay? Know that for the purposes of the road test, if you want to be successful, that you need to practice in and around the road test. And if you get into higher class licenses, class one tractor trailer, buses, and those types of things, know that there are commercial routes. There's only certain routes that you can go on. You can't take a tractor trailer into a residential area. So it's fairly easy for you, if you sit down and give it a little bit of thought, look at Google Maps, where the test center is. Because in Victoria, uh, when I was, uh, testing for tractor trailers and buses there were only a couple of routes that you could go on to do the test for tractor trailers so it wasn't that hard to figure out where it was and driving instructors know where these are and if you pay for a practice road test they're going to take you on these on these routes okay uh, Jaden hey Rick yesterday the Cape Coral traffic lights by the gas station just went out on Saturday but I have a question if someone follows you and he also is mad with you do you drive to the police station uh, if somebody's uh, expressing road rage, Jaden, uh, an excellent question, uh, and your vehicle is stopped and they come up and they approach you at the window, okay, don't roll down the window, don't engage with them, don't look at them, don't unlock the door. Uh, you know, you can take your camera out, you, uh, your phone out and take a picture of them. But yes, if they're continuing to drive behind you, they're continuing to follow you, then yes, drive directly to the police station. Do not drive home if somebody is displaying aggressive behavior uh, towards whatever something happened on the roadway, you're driving those types of things. Yes, just drive to the police station. Don't get out of your vehicle. Don't engage with them because you don't know who you're going to be dealing with, uh, especially in some of these areas in uh, the United States and other large metropolitan areas. I mean, somebody might have a, a weapon. so. Uh, yeah, it's best to be safe, lock the doors, don't engage, don't roll down the windows and whatnot, okay? 
Muhammad, uh, can I use a U-Haul van for road test Class C passenger endorsement in New Jersey? Uh, probably not, Muhammad, because one of the, if you don't hold the class of license, uh, I, I might back up on that. Uh, can you use for Class C passenger endorsement? U-Haul van. Uh, I, Muhammad, I believe you can because as long as you don't have passengers in that vehicle, you can drive it with your regular passenger vehicle license. As soon as you put passengers in it, then it becomes a Class C license. I think you can do that so long as you don't have passengers in the vehicle. Now, I would just double check that information. I would go down to the DOT, Muhammad, and ask them that information because I think you can. All right. Uh, Andres, Andreas, I failed my pre-trip inspection last week. So Andreas, what was the reason that they gave you for not being successful on your pre-trip inspection uh, with Class A license last week? Okay, let's see. What else I got here? Okay. And I had a smart driver comment the other day, especially the video that I put up about reversing correctly for the purposes of a road test, that reversing was incredibly challenging for her. Uh, some years ago, I had a friend of mine who I taught and had, she had a learning disability and uh, she was gonna get her license. So one of the things that I focused on with her was reversing. We had a back alleyway and I would get her to back down the back alleyway. And it was incredibly difficult for her to do that. Uh, and it's difficult for new drivers to be able to reverse the vehicle in a straight line for a long distance. And when I'm talking long distance, I'm, talk I'm not talking, you know, quarter, half a mile, you know, like half a kilometer or something. I'm, I'm simply talking, you know, 300 yards, 300 meters. Uh, and basically what the reason for that is, is because you learn where the vehicle is in space and place. And this is the most important skill uh, that you need for the purposes of being able to drive a vehicle well and being able to pass a road test. You need to know where the vehicle is in space and place and you need mastery of the primary controls. So if you are having difficulty backing up, if this is a challenge for you and you're avoiding this, I'm gonna tell you right now that you are you're, not, you're doing yourself a disservice long term in your driving career because you're never going to get better at this until you spend some time and actually practice backing up. Because backing up and being able to back up well teaches you where your vehicle is in space and place and it teaches you mastery of the primary controls, the steering wheel, the brake and the throttle, which you're going to need to be a good driver. So if reversing challenges you, if slow speed maneuvers, parallel parking, reverse stall parking, or three point turns, all of this challenges you, spend more time on it. And that way you will be a better driver overall, okay? So I can't stress that enough. These slow speed maneuvers, learning mastery of the primary controls will make you a better driver overall. And it is less likely that you will be involved in a traffic crash if you are able to master these skills. So do that and master these skills. Okay. Uh, Jaden also with me and my sister wanted to go on the interstate. There were emergency vehicles on the ramp. So the on ramp was closed. So we had to take an alternate route. Yes. Sometimes that's the best thing to do if there are emergency vehicles. Jaden, that's excellent that you did that. Uh, it was a motorcycle crash. Unfortunately, motorcycle crashes are often fatal, especially at high speeds such as that. Okay. Um, yes, there you go. Jack Leonard also got his learner's permit. Excellent. That's congratulate your friend for me there, Jaden. That's awesome. Gordon, how are you, my friend? Excellent. And Teddy's here as well. Hi there. So, uh, so we talked about backing up uh, mentors and instructors and yes we had a comment there from a smart driver previously about unfortunately her husband was yelling at her if you have a mentor and who's helping you to get your license and prepare for your license and they are yelling at you you need to explain to them that they can't yell because there's just for new drivers there's just simply there's too much going on and I am guilty of making this mistake one time with a student. I yelled at him. Uh, what had happened, we were in a tractor trailer unit. We were kind of on a hill 
and the traffic light went green, the traffic light went green three times, and I raised my voice to the student, and it simply made the situation worse. And the student could not calm himself down enough to get the vehicle going, because it was a big truck, standard transmission, and simply kept stalling the vehicle, and finally I had to sit in the seat and I had to get the truck going. It's imperative for mentors and instructors to keep your calm no matter what happens. And now, uh, when I'm teaching students, it's I call it going flat. Essentially, my energy just goes flat, and I never raise my voice no matter what happens. And I'll tell you a funny story about this. Uh, I was working at Parkwood Hospital in London, Ontario years ago when I was going to university in, in, at Western in London, and we had a new student and we did an evaluation. Uh, it was a driver who had a brain injury and was returning to driving after a couple of years. So we did an evaluation. We were out on the test route and uh, we decided, so I kind of decided that yes, this student has showed demonstrated enough ability to be able to learn to drive and return to driving. So uh, I started to teach him a little bit because I looked at the um, occupational therapy a therapist Deb who is the occupational therapist in the back and she we both kind of nodded each other and said yeah he's good for retraining so I explained to him how to get out on the freeway and I said you need to stay on the freeway on the ramp until the end get the vehicle up to speed find your space and then merge into your space so <laughs> we get out on the ramp and he kind of got to the end of the ramp and then he panicked and he didn't merge out onto the freeway rather he just stayed and drove off into the gravel and of course the vehicle started to fishtail a little bit and I just quietly said to him, I just reached over and I touched the steering wheel. Didn't really grab a hold of it, I just touched the steering wheel and I said, just take your foot off the throttle. Because as soon as the vehicle starts to fishtail, as soon as you take your foot off the throttle, it'll regrain traction and it'll straighten out. And I could hear poor Deb in the back seat just go, <gasps> and she just, she freaked out and she's just like, how do you keep calm like that? Well, it's just practice, right? You just, it's like anything that we do in life that we get good at eventually, that we get practice and we and it gets better. And it's easier for the students because the students don't react because you're in a vehicle, you're in close proximity to one another. And if, if the driving instructor or the mentor is yelling or they're increasing the energy in the vehicle and it's anxious and it's tense, it is not a good learning environment for students. And just a note to mentors and to instructors who are new and haven't done this before, students take 30 to 50% more time to do the same thing that somebody who is experienced is doing because they need, need time to process the information. They need time to implement it. They're thinking about their actions. It's not all uh, automatic for them as it is for those of us who are experienced drivers. So know that. Uh, that it's going to take more time and just try and keep your calm. If you do start to lose your calm as a mentor or instructor, uh, you're getting upset, you're getting agitated, ask the student to stop the car in a safe place, in a parking lot or gas station parking lot or wherever. Just get out, go for a little walk and come back. You know, start concentrating on your breathing and those types of things. All right. Uh, Gordon, when I went for my road test, I had two testers with me. One was in training. I did not notice the tester looking at my eyes to make sure I was checking my mirrors. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I love that one, Gordon, that they have all these mirrors in the car and they say, oh, the, the driving examiner is looking to see where you're looking. Uh, if you're just moving your eyes in the vehicle and they're looking at them, as far as I'm concerned, you're not observing properly because you cannot just move your eyes like this and look to where you need to look. When you're looking in a wing mirror, you're going to go like this. You're going to move your head. It's the same thing when you're looking in a center mirror. You're not just going to go like this. You can't you can't just look in the center mirror. You got to move your head up to look. So when driving is, and I've had driving instructors tell me this and I completely disagree and I have the same thing with driving examiners. They've said the same thing. Oh, we're looking to see where you're looking. And it's like you're moving your head. Your eyes don't move enough to be able to, to do all the obser observation that you need to do correctly in a vehicle. So you're gonna be moving your head. You're gonna be looking in the center mirror. You're gonna be looking in the wing mirror. You're gonna be looking down the road, looking in the wing mirror over there. So you, your head has to move because <laughs> your eyes don't move enough in your skull for you to do that. So when, when people tell me that, I, it, it, I always chuckle. I just chuckle.
because you can't you have to move your head all right if you move your head then there, and you do a running commentary and Corey will put the video up for you on the running commentary then driving examiners driving instructors mentors don't have to guess what you're looking at what you're thinking if you're saying listen there's a pedestrian there at the crosswalk and they may push the button and step out into traffic then the driving instructor driving examiner whoever knows exactly what you're doing as a student and what you're thinking about what you're trying to process so running commentary moving your head and looking around is going to help you out a lot okay uh, Marty when backing up they say turn towards the problem how do you know what the problem is is it the side that's too tight or the side that has too much uh, Marty I, I'm not sure I've never heard that before Marty uh, look where the problem is what I what I might think that is Marty is is that you should be looking at whatever fixed object or other road user that you're closest to so for example if you're reverse stall parking and you're stall parking in along beside another vehicle so you have a vehicle over here but this space on this side is empty yes be looking at the car there because you don't want to be hitting the car but at one and the same time you want to stay away from the car and closer to the empty space because that way you've got better space management so that's one of the things they might be talking about when they're talking about that uh, Jack are people really strict on how far away you should be from the curb so when you're parallel parking or curb parking Jack you should be sort of 8 to 12 inches away from the curb so if you look at a curb as you as most of us know sidewalks it's got the elevated part and then it's got this part here you should be kind of within that 8 to 12 inches away from the curb which is kind of 15 to 20 centimeters away from the curb is ideal now good question because on a road test if you're a little bit farther than that away from the curb or you're a little bit too close uh, you're only going to lose a couple of points it's not a big deal so don't freak out about it and don't spend a lot of time trying to adjust the vehicle so that your ideal the ideal space away from the curb it doesn't matter too much okay uh, epic epic failed three times because of parallel parking does doing backing up maneuver in parallel parking with an instructor help me pass the road test some driving schools offered as a re refresher before the test uh, epic yes parallel parking is going to help you with your road test because it's going to improve your overall skills now I wouldn't spend money on this you can just go and do this with your dad or somebody else who's going to help you a mentor or whatnot just go and rent some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and go down and set them up in a parking lot and do it there or go out into the neighborhood and practice on your own you don't need somebody else you just watch my video on parallel parking and go out and practice it on your own you're going to be successful on your road test and yes it's going to improve your overall driving okay hot pepper do they test parallel parking in class 5 BC exam yes they do hot pepper and be almost guaranteed that that is one of the staples of the road test and one of the maneuvers that you're going to have to do okay uh, Marty does Canadian have the automatic restriction I think it's the most important endorsement to have thank you yes Marty they do have the automatic restriction I think you're talking about CDL license yes we have an automatic restriction if you take a commercial vehicle for a road test you're gonna get an automatic restriction that you can only drive vehicles fitted with automatic transmissions uh, on your road test uh, Gordon my mom was highly vocal <laughs> Eh, I was highly vocal yelling commentator fortunately I was stoic enough to endure <laughs> sorry to hear that Gordon and yes this is one of the other things that you need to do when you're learning how to drive and if you're anxious or have any uh, frustration or trepidation about your driving there's a video here Corey will have a, put it up for you how to reduce fear and anxiety when driving and one of the key tips focus on what you're doing focus on what you're doing don't get distracted by what other drivers are doing don't go oh my god that guy's speeding he's a moron he could die kill somebody drive into a tree and explode in a fiery inferno okay <laughs> don't don't care about what he's doing oh my god he's speeding let him go and have his crash somewhere else focus on what you're doing it's the most important thing for you to pass your road test. It's the most important for thing for you to stay crash free. Okay? <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, Marty, if you had bunny rabbit eyes. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can if you bunny rabbit eyes. There you go. Uh, okay. Sister Sam, hello. Uh, 
Yes, there you go. Okay, uh, where did the comment go? There we go. Juke, uh, you didn't read my comment. Okay, can you copy and paste it again? Because I didn't see it. I'm sorry. It's not. It's just that it's kind of busy right now because we got a lot of people here. How much money do you think I have to spend if I want a sport motorcycle? Depends. It depends a lot on how old the bike is, what kind of bike you want, uh, how big you want it. It depends. There's a lot of factors on how much you're going to spend on a motorcycle. You can sort of spend anywhere from sort of like $500 for a really old motorcycle to 35,000 if you want to buy a new one. So it depends on what you're what you're looking for. There's my friend Sam. Uh, driving lessons by Big Mac Sam. There he is uh, from the Bronx. Uh, works for as a driving instructor for the Rookie Auto Driving School as well. Uh, Corey, I'll put the link up for you. Sam also has a YouTube channel, and I think you recently passed uh, a thousand subscribers. Did you not, Sam? Just let me know there. That is really awesome. Uh, so, Sister Sam, you're stop shopping for a sport bike right now. What kind of sport bike are you looking for, uh, Sam? Excellent. Uh, Patel, what if we have no sign in residential areas and want to make a turn? Where to look? Uh, so you want to make a turn in a residential area, probably the best thing to do, Patel, is to look at the video on determining right of way. That will help you out in terms of where you need to look at an uncontrolled intersection. So you need to position the vehicle. Uh, say for example, you're making a right turn to the right of the lane. You want to be scanning the intersection as you're approaching the intersection for other road users. You want to be looking off to the right where you want the vehicle to go. Determine whether there's other road users, if you need to give the right of way to those other road users, so pedestrians, whatnot, and then uh, you know you slow down, make sure that there isn't any traffic coming from your left, and then make your turn and observe and you know make the turn, turn the steering wheel, look in the direction you want to travel, and proceed. So that's what you need to do for the purposes of making a turn in a residential area. Uh, there you go, Rosie. Uh, your road test is going to be in the Bronx. Sam is the person you want to talk to there because uh, Sam, too, is in the Bronx with Rookie Auto Driving School. And he'll be more than happy to help you out. Yes, Chad is busy today, sister. This is a very popular topic. Uh, Claudia, while on a test on three-point parking, I got so nervous I couldn't do it right and backed up three times, and the test person failed me. Sorry to hear that, but I had still more time to use. So that is not fair, right? Uh no, unfortunately, Claudia, if you conduct uh, an unsafe maneuver or you simply take too many times, uh, unfortunately, you're going to be unsuccessful on a road test. So you need to, and and this is and this is a good point about taking a road test and focusing on what you're doing. This is one of the things that we used to do in martial arts. When you get nervous, you're going to do what you've practiced. So unfortunately, if you haven't practiced enough. That is going to show when you get anxious or nervous. So and this is why I say to students, practice, practice, practice. Practice the slow speed maneuvers. Get mastery of the primary controls. Learn to drive in different traffic situations with different people in the vehicle. Because if you get different people in the vehicles, uh, if you have the same person all the time, if it's always your dad, you're just gonna become kind of complacent and you're gonna not really try and improve your skills stretch your learning ability. If you're driving in town in the same place all the time around the driving center, your, your skills are not going to improve. And it's that saying, uh, calm seas seldom make better, better sailors, right? We need to stretch ourselves. If you want to be a better driver, you need to expose yourself to as many vehicles, to as many driving situations and different traffic situations and environments as possible. And unfortunately, when you get anxious, when you get frustrated, when you get under pressure, it's going to show. It's going to show your lack of practice. So you need to practice, practice, practice. And you and I can tell you right now, the, 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 the slow speed maneuvers that have to be absolutely in place, parallel parking, three-point turn, reverse stall parking, those three maneuvers, you can be guaranteed, no matter where you are in the world, taking a road test, you are going to have to do those three maneuvers, parallel park, three-point turn, reverse stall park. So focus on those and get those solid for the purposes of your road test. Uh, Jack, do you instantly fail you if you hit the curb or do you restart the test and lose some points? Uh, Jack, this is a question I've had because I did say that you could pull ahead. Now, when you when you can't hit the curb, okay, you can touch the curb and readjust. 
If you hit the curb and the body of the vehicle rocks over the chassis, that's a fail because you hit the curb. Or if you push the tire up over the curb, that's an automatic fail. But if you simply just touch the curb, know that you touched it and then pull ahead and readjust, that's not a fail because it shows an advanced level of driving ability because you know where your vehicle is in space and place because you have touched the curb. Um, Oh, that's all. That's all good, Sam. Oh, it's good that you jump in here every now and again. It's all awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. In Astoria, I failed my road test at the end of March, but then I passed on my second attempt. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for recopying that, uh, Corey. There. That's brilliant. Okay, Marty. The sixty-four thousand question. Sixty-four thousand dollar question. Uh, they want to go for 57 foot trailers like in Canada. You'll never be able to get bridge law because you have either too much tail swing or tandems too far back. Yes, uh, Marty, I think we may get these on some of the bigger highways and interstates. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about right now, uh, standard semi-trailer length right now is 53 feet. Uh, some years ago, late 80s, early 90s, it went from 48 feet for a maximum length on a semi-trailer to 53 feet. And uh, what Marty's talking about is now they're talking about 57 feet. and what they're talking about in terms of bridge law is is that bridges are designed to hold a certain amount of weight otherwise they deteriorate faster and those types of things and with commercial vehicles you have to have 41 feet between the kingpin which is the the hitch on the semi trailer to the center of the tandems at the back you have to have 41 feet what happens is is if you put another four feet on the back of that trailer you can't maintain that 41 feet any anymore because you have a certain weight per distance on bridge to, to be uh, in compliance with bridge laws. So I don't know whether 57 foot trailers are gonna come into play. They may come into play, but it's not likely in the States because the States is really sort of stuck with their tandem tandem trailers at 53 feet, which complies with bridge, bridge laws. So it might come in, but it's not likely, okay? Okay, uh, Sam says, that's correct. If you knock the examiner out of his or her seat when parallel parking and you hit the curb, it's over. <laughs> that's pretty funny. You'd have to hit it pretty hard uh, to, to, to do that. Okay, so uh, we're getting near the end here. Yes, we are. Ending. There we go. Transition. So, yes, we're getting near the end here. I'll try and answer a couple of more questions before we finish up. Uh, if you're not, if you're going for a road test, make sure you head over to the Smart Drive Test website and pick up your checklist, uh, which will guarantee that you pass your road test because it'll give you a checklist of things that you need to look at and consider for the purposes of passing your road test, okay? Uh, Paul, what is a good rule of thumb for curb parking? On my first test, I lost points for not turning the wheel on hills. I didn't even notice there was a grade. Okay, so... Uh, Paul, two videos that you want to have a look at. Uh, Corey will put them up for you. One is curb parking, the curb parking video, and the other one is hill parking. And uh, so what you need to do, Paul, for the purposes of hill parking, remember the three-in-one rule. So everything is in towards the curb. The only time that the wheels are out is uphill with a curb. So think of it like this. One smart driver said uh, that his her, her instructor said, think of it like Superman, up, up, and away. So if it's uphill with a curb, the tires are out and you rest the back of the front steer tires on the curb. That's the only one that's out. Otherwise, it's three in one. Everything else is in towards the shoulder. Okay, so that's the only one you have to remember. Uh, so Marty, 57 foot trailers will, ha uh, will have to have tritums. Okay, yes, they, they would have to be tritums. Okay, Claudia, thanks, Rick. You were so right. I haven't practiced enough and not the way you mentioned. I just did in the test area and only with my daughter and only with her car. You are so right. Yes, so Claudia, if you can get as much practice and practice those slow, slow speed maneuvers and, and as well, have a look at the learn to drive video. That'll help you out as well. Sister Sam, why are there so many holes after the winter? Uh, Sister Sam, excellent question. The reason that you have so many holes at, in the winter time is because the moisture underneath the road bed freezes. Okay, in the winter time. In the spring, when it warms up, that ice thaws and it becomes water. And what happens is you get a high water content under the road surface, which is also contributed to by the melting snow, moisture underneath the roadbed. And because it's underneath there and it's freezing, it's thawing, 
the ice is thawing, uh, it creates huge spaces between the gravel and other aggregates that are underneath the bitumen. So what happens is it starts to move. So you get traffic on top of it. This is unstable because there's a high water content in it. So it's moving. The bitumen on top is moving. So this whole thing is moving with the traffic and the weight of the roadway on it. And what happens is it becomes unstable and the base becomes unstable. And because it's unstable, it, you get holes and wearing under the road surface and this is why you get potholes in the summer and have a look at the pothole video on how to avoid potholes okay there we go uh excellent percy how much cost when going to school uh vehicles from georgia uh percy probably that that question would be best answered by talking to one of your local driving schools okay so we're going to leave it there for today if you have any more questions, uh, leave us a comment. We'll do the best we can to answer any questions you have about passing a road test and being successful on a road test. If you're watching on the replay, consider hitting that thumbs up button, say thanks there, and uh, leave us a question, share around on social media that helps all of the smart drivers to pass the road test and be successful in earning a license. If you passed a road test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations, that's awesome. And if you have a road test coming up, good luck on that, and remember, Pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.